Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy Show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the show, folks. This is Tom Clark's main event, and I'm your host of the aforementioned Tom Clark. There I is. How's everybody doing out there today in podcast land? We hope everyone is doing freaking fantastic. I'm Tom. This is my show. Uh, We are on to week number two of the new graphics, the new setup, the new layout. We hope you guys are enjoying this sucker because, but let me tell you, it's awesome to bring it to you. Um, as always, I got to give a very special shout out to, uh, my bro, a good friend of mine, uh, Mr. Nathan Workman, uh, who made all this tech possible. He helped a brother out a couple of weeks ago and got us hooked up here and I could not be happier. Uh, this is a pretty cool deal. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, we are getting some folks to already show up here today for the show. Uh, the regulars are showing up. I got my Charlotte exclusive new Japan shirt on when they came, uh, to Concord at the Cabarrus Arena. Pretty cool deal. Um, Hope everyone out there is doing great. We see our regulars showing up. Shane, Christopher, Alma, what's going on? Shannon, what's up, my dear? Hope you guys are doing freaking awesome. Uh, What's up, Justin in Jersey? Clark in Carolina here. You like that? So, uh, yeah, man, we've we've got the, the old cans back on using the Bluetooth Yeti, or excuse me, the Yeti Blue stereo microphone. I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, the wireless headset deal worked great. I know it sounds good on the broadcast itself because I watched the show back to kind of critique it. But on the recording of the show that it uploads to uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, the sound wasn't great. So I'm back to the cans and to the Yeti. We'll see how this sucker sounds. It's always a work in progress here on the show. Uh, Elvis, glad to see you there, brother. Linda, what's going on? James, Sandy in Germany, what's going on, bro? Hope everyone out there is doing great. Uh, It's been uh, seven days since we spoke. Man, the stuff that can happen in seven days, right? It's been an amazing week um, uh, in terrible, terrible ways and in some ways good because of uh, the world's changing, folks, and that's a good thing. This country needs to change. And uh, as we said last week, uh, yes, this is a pro wrestling podcast. Yes, this is a pro wrestling Facebook page. However, we are not oblivious to the world around us. We're fully aware of what's going on in terms of uh, current events here in the United States. So uh, for those of you, for our friends watching and listening around the world, let me tell you, man, it's been a pressure cooker over here in many ways. uh, But I think we're on the right path. Um, Danny at the beach. Danny, my God, be safe down there, bro. So, uh, Paul, what is up, my man? Good to see you. Hope everyone out there is doing great. Um, We want to go ahead and get to it. Um, As I said before, yes, this is a pro wrestling podcast. Uh, Yes, this is a pro wrestling uh, channel, as we've said before. Uh, All good, and I know that's what you guys came here for. But we have to be honest and and talk about the world around us, if only for a few minutes. Because let's be honest, I want to get your input. I want to know what you guys think. Um, The show topics this week, this is episode number 181, of course. This is recent events, Twitter wars, and big shows. Not the big show, but big shows in terms of a big shows, like plural, okay? Um, First topic of the day, we can spend as little or as much time as you guys want to on this. Um, And I know this is a hot button topic for many reasons, but maybe it should be. Black Lives Matter and why it matters in pro wrestling. Now listen, don't hold back here, man. I want to get your full uh, reaction to this. no matter what you may think about the topic at hand, be respectful. We always ask you to be respectful. No language. Uh, don't disrespect anyone here or anyone else for that matter, anywhere else, I should say. But uh, tell me what you're thinking, man, because this this topic has took hold uh, as well it should. It's high time that this was addressed here in the country. And uh, I'm glad that um, it looks as though we are actually seeing a move forward and um, uh, and hopefully we are looking for the change. You know, that what's the old saying? Be the change that you want to see. Uh, I think it's put a lot of us on notice. It's put a lot of people who maybe have backwards attitudes, who are arrogant, who are racist, who are condescending, that kind of thing. Hopefully those men and women are standing up and, and realizing that this is a very small world. 
and uh, we're all connected. So uh, folks, continue to pour in. I know you're seeing the topic and you're seeing what's going on, the ticker on the bottom of the screen. Um, like I said before, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this or we can spend some time on it. It's completely up to you guys, but I just, I just want to know what you think. Paul Brady hits us with all lives matter. Paul, all due respect, we all know all lives matter. It's not a question of that, my man. It's never been a question of that. But the focus has to be on Black Lives Matter. You want to know why? Because until Black Lives Matter, all lives don't matter. That's it, period. That's how I feel. Uh, and I'm not trying to, to diss what you said. I get it. Of course, all lives matter. But this thing's got to be fixed. I mean, it's and, and the word fixed is big. It's a it's a very complex situation. But anyway, um, how does this fit into to pro wrestling? How how do you how do you put the two together? Because pro wrestling has always been a direct reflection of what's going on in the world around us, right? From the storylines, the characters, the situations, from the comedy to the drama to everything in between. Pro wrestling, like comic books, will often reflect what's going on in the world around us in pop culture and mainstream media and politics on TV and the news and crime and you know all this other stuff. I mean, obviously. Um, uh, uh, it, it's, it's got, uh, it's gotten to be insane. So, uh, uh, so yeah, pro wrestling is a direct reflection of that. So how does it affect the pro wrestling business or does it, uh, when you look at companies like WWE, AEW, New Japan, Ring of Honor, NWA, do they reflect any of this? Do they bring any characters in? Do they allow their African-American performers to stand up or take a knee in the ring? Uh, are they, I mean, not to trivialize it. I'm not suggesting that they're going to or anything like that. Uh, but that's what I'm asking is, is uh, uh, what what do you think is going to happen in the world of pro wrestling? Do you think they're going to give a voice to it? Or by the time we get back to live events with actual uh, actual paying fans in, in attendance, do you think we're going to be moving to, not moving on from it because we shouldn't move on from it, right? Because it needs our direct attention. But, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think we'll be to the point where the focus won't be so heavily on it? I just want your thoughts. That's all. Vince says, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Elvis. Elvis says Vince is finally having more black champions. I'll be honest with you, Elvis. Um, uh, I don't know if that should be done. I just think treat all your performance with the same amount of respect and give each man and woman uh, the same opportunities based upon uh, ability. I've never been one to say, well, that guy should be champion because he's been here the longest. I mean, seniority does have a place. Loyalty has a place. Honestly, let's be honest about it, no matter what line of work you're talking about. But in my line of work outside of the pro wrestling business, I have promoted men and women before based on longevity. And wow, sometimes it's a terrible move. They just weren't suited for the position. So I'm not arguing your point, man. I'm just saying it's like it's like a balancing act, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Danny says Black Lives Matter is taking some people wrong. Maybe Black Lives Matter 2 would be better accepted. Uh, maybe. I mean, I get your point. I get your point, man. Maybe it is on the phrasing of it. But let's. who's getting offended by it? White people. Let's just call it for what it is. And again, I, it's not a political thing. I get it. Uh, uh, don't anybody split because you came here for wrestling and you're like, oh, God, what's this clown doing? Please don't take it that way. I just wanted to give you you guys uh, – we don't live in a bubble, folks. Pro wrestling, despite what Vince Man believes, his company's in a bubble. We're not, okay? We're living, breathing uh, regular folks, you and me. Probably 9% of us are blue-collar guys and gals. We're just you know, doing our jobs and trying to earn a living, trying to feed our families, and trying to have fun and be entertained by wrestling on the side, right? Um, so, yeah, we're not in a bubble, dude. So, I mean, we we have opinions, and we, you know, we're living, breathing this stuff every day, some of us more than others, right? So, yeah, that's why I wanted to open the door and give you guys and gals a chance to talk. Jamie says, it's a subject that needs to be addressed. It has been swept underneath the carpet for so many years. Jamie my friend, I will say absolutely to that. Absolutely. Keith, with a good, honest question, and don't anyone bag on Keith for this. Keith says, do you think Lashley wins the title on Sunday at Backlash for this reason? Keith, thank you for that. And I please don't anyone misconstrue what he's asking. I'm not... I don't think he means it in a negative way, but we've seen that it be knee-jerk before to things happening around them. Do they put the title on Lashley because of this? Here's what I would say to you. Pro wrestling is a form of entertainment, as we all know. It's it's pre-written or you know preconceived, whatever you want to call it. It's scripted. I hate the word scripted, dude, but it's the truth, right? So uh, do they do a knee-jerk reaction? If the plan was not to give the title to Lashley, and, and you do the knee jerk and give it to him because you, because of the situation and you end up having to go rewrite a two, three months worth of storylines. Does Lashley even care? That would be how I would preface. Maybe that question is not go to him and say, what do you want the belt? Who's going to say no. Right. But like at the same time, um, 
Bobby, how would you feel? You know, and listen, it, you're a pro. You're you're already a main event guy. You're already on TV. You're featured. They're selling your merch. They're keeping you out there. I mean, do you really care about winning or losing? Unless you're, you know, you go on this huge losing streak and you can't buy a victory to save your life. And even then, there's a story there. It's it's a weird question. Not not weird of you to ask, but just a weird topic. You know what I mean? Because it's pro wrestling in the world of pro wrestling. It's bizarro land sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's hard to know, man. It's hard to know. Toby says, I'm afraid Vince will just push it under the rug and pretend there isn't a problem. Interesting. Interesting. That could very well be the case. Robbie, what's up, my friend? Michael in Kenya. Holy cow, Michael in Kenya. Freaking awesome of you to watch, man. Thank you so much for hanging out, dude. Uh, Michael, if this is your first time watching, everyone watching can tell you I'm a sucker for people in other countries and getting the international flavor here watching the show. It's the coolest thing. I got folks in Germany and England and, and Canada and uh, Africa and uh, Europe, all parts of Europe. So, yeah, man. Dude, Scotland, Ireland. Dude, thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you enjoy the show. Hang out for the whole show, man. We're going to have fun. Shane says, race relations to me are more strained up north. I think we here in the south have learned to get along with each other. Shane, I'm in the South too, my man. And I, I don't know what state you live in, bro, but in North Carolina, I'm not seeing that at all. Uh, not at all. Uh, I still know plenty of white people who have no problem saying the N-word any given day. Uh, I don't know them by choice. I know them because by association, I have to know them. Do you know see what I'm saying? I don't hang out with them because I have no desire to. But yeah, dude, there's just as much racism here today as there was when I was growing up as a kid in this state, if I'm being straight. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just telling you like it is. So. Tim says, I think shirts and ring gear are fine, but wrestling is an escape for me. It's supposed to be fun. Tim, I'll give you that. Tim, I'll totally give you that. And I appreciate your comment, man. Sal in Vegas is having a blast. What's up, Sal? David in Australia. I remember you, man. Thanks for hanging out again. Uh, listen, to all you fine folks watching the show today, if we are not friends on the Facebook, for goodness sake, send me a friend request, man. If you can't find me, send it to the Wrestling Rumors uh, Messenger. And I'll I'll open that sucker up, send it, see it, and send you a request, okay? For real. I love collecting friends, yo. It's my, kind of my thing. So, dude, if you'll do that, that'd be freaking great. Shannon, uh, I always value your opinion. Thank you for talking about it, Tom. It's not talked about enough. We should be standing up for our black friends and neighbors. It's 2020. This should uh, not be an issue or happening. I couldn't agree with you more. It's time we all woke up, for sure. For sure. Uh, Toby says, Virginia, there's plenty of racism, especially down here in the southern part. I, I, Dude, I can totally see that. Like I said, I'm in the south. I'm in North Carolina, and baby, we're one of the most backward states in the union. I mean, it's the truth, man. It's the. I'm sorry. I've lived through my whole life, bro. I know what, trust me when I tell you, I know what the frick I'm talking about, man. Trust me when I tell you that, okay? Alma says, I live here in Texas all my life, proud to be an Irish and African-American Choctaw. Wow, man, what a combination. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. Josh from Northern Ireland. What's up, jo Joshy? Dude, awesome. Michael says, where are you from? I'm from, uh, actually from a small town in North Carolina called Lenore. A blade, basically, if you're driving through Lenore, Lenore and you sneeze, you'll miss it. It's that quick. But I now uh, reside in the Hickory Conover area. Don't go trying to find me. <laughs> COVID, I don't want your sickness. God's sake. No stalkers. I shouldn't make fun of the stalking thing. It's a real problem. So, uh, okay, folks, we don't have to spend a ton of time on this. Uh, I've got mostly, not most, but got a lot of my regulars here watching the show today. I appreciate everyone watching as we always do, man. I just wanted to get, um, I just want to get your take. We don't have to spend all day on this. I just, it's on my mind. Uh, it should be on all of our minds. It should be on all of our hearts and weighing heavy on us. Um, yeah, for sure. So, Let's see. Jason says, I just found out five years ago they removed the flag uh, from the General Lee. I've never, uh, never even knew that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's a big deal taking the Confederate flag down, man. I'm sorry. I agree with doing it. Brenda says, Racism, racism is everywhere, but I see the person as a person. When I was growing up, um, Cook would be where it's one of my faves. I didn't see him for his color, but his character. And from what I've seen him in interviews, seems like a good man. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Totally makes sense. And I agree with you 100%. Donnie says, Asheville, Asheville in the house. What's up, Donnie? I got a good friend who lives up there, Kyle Smith. 
If you know Cal, tell him I said, hey, you probably don't know Cal. Uh, Shannon says, racism here everywhere, everywhere in California. Wow, crazy. I know you're on the West Coast. Thank you for watching, as always. You're, man, you've been a loyal fan to me. I appreciate that. I really do, guys. Dennis in uh, uh, New Brunswick, Canada. What's up? What's up? What's going on? Robbie says, to all the new people from far away, Lance, welcome. Tom is the bomb and hope you enjoy it. Well, God, I can't do any better than that. Thank you, Robbie. What an endorsement. What an endorsement. Uh, Ken says, thought this was wrestling rumors. Well, Ken, don't go away. Don't go away, Mad Ken. We're going to get to the wrestling right now. Ken's put us on notice. He's going to, uh, you know, he's upset. Don't let anyone tell, tell Ken to don't tell. Ken, just hang around, dude. It's all good, man. It's all good. You want to get back to the wrestling? That's what you came here for? Hey, man, we can totally do that. Why don't we get into some controversy? That'll be good. Well, not much controversy. It's maybe a little itty-bitty controversy. Randy being Randy. Orton spars with Tommaso Ciampa on the Twitter. It was fun. It didn't last very long. Um, uh, it, it was, uh, yeah, crazy. So, uh, uh, let's see, Billy and SoCal. What's up? What's up? Can the soon to be UPR promo champion get his shit? Ricky, what's up, man? I'll give you a shout out. What's up, Ricky? I see your name all the time, man. Uh, Shane, we had the question about Lashley already, man. I, honestly, it's a big, I'm not sure on that one. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, any kind of breaking news you want to get to, man, we'll get to it. But has anyone looked and seen um, uh, the exchange between Champa and Orton on Twitter? Uh, as we all know, uh, Champa, or excuse me, Orton is not, uh, he's not shy, folks. And uh, you're going to love this. If you haven't seen it, it's going to take up your whole screen, okay? But I'm still working on the, the kinks of this thing. So here we go. You ready? Here's the tweet. Heard WWE NXT takeover in your house was great. Slapping my leg for you guys. Sincerely, hashtag leg slap. <laughs> Let me just tell you something. Randy Orton is Randy Orton is Randy Orton, okay? Randy is not going to change for you or me or anybody else, okay? Get that out of your head. It's never going to happen, right? Because he is who he is. He's unapologetic. Uh, he doesn't care. Dude, if they fired him today, you know he'd say? Psst, I don't care, whatever. He'd just go home. He'd go home and count his money, be with his family. What would he care? He's And, dude, he's been in that position for a long time. For as far as we know, he has, dude. He's never cared. And I'll tell you this: anybody that's ever been around Randy Orton that's willing to talk to you will tell you the same thing. They, dude, don't care. He's that laid back, dude. He's all. I mean, he is who he is. You're not going to be able to change him. Uh, what do you think about the leg slap comment? <laughs> Brennan says the voices do talk to him. Well done. Yeah. Uh, Toby says I love Randy on Twitter. He's uh he's fun to say the least. He can be when he's not being vicious and being a jerk to people, and I mean flat out jerk. I've seen him be a flat out jerk to fans, and and say things. I mean, you know, when he, he's a heel, Tommy's a heel. He's living the part. No, he's not. He's being Randy. That's a big difference between Randy being a heel or face. Tom Randy's being a heel. No, he's not. Stop. Come on. If you've ever followed, if you followed Randy Orton for more than two minutes at a time in your entire life, you know what this guy is. Um, and I have all due respect for, I interviewed Randy on the show. Did you guys know that? Go back to the archives of Tom Clark's main event. And I interviewed Randy Orton. Yeah, it was cool. It was, uh, gave me a great interview. Very, very, very talkative, very cordial, very nice, very humble. He didn't come off like a jerk at all. I mean, was he supposed to? I didn't expect that, but yeah, man, he gave me a great interview. Um, I, a lot of respect for the guy for what he's accomplished in the business, for what he's yet to do for sure. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Brandon says Punk is better on Twitter than Orton, in my opinion. Punk doesn't really go after anybody and make it personal, does he? Shannon says he's a savage. I love it. Yes, I totally agree with you. It's it's entertaining, if nothing else. Like I said, as long as he doesn't take it too far south and, and go nuts with it. And and I, sometimes I think he's genuinely trying to hurt. Uh, you know. And guess what, folks? If you don't like it, you ain't got to look at it, right? It's like the same thing with a TV show or a movie. You know, People talking about, well, this movie should be censored. This TV show went too far. Turn the channel. Turn the channel, okay? You don't got to watch it. That's it. Not necessary. So anyway, uh, let's get back to what happened. So, yes, uh, he did that. And then Champa, this is a good one, folks, responded with this. Champa says, my daughter has been having trouble sleeping. Luckily, I found a remedy. Randy Orton matches. Better than NyQuil. 
Sincerely, hashtag an entire locker room who busted their A. <laughs> it's time to play the feud. It's good stuff. Champ is not shy, baby. Just like Gordon, he'll say what he means. I've been checking on this all week, and as of this morning, nothing else has been said, except Orton did come back with a rebuttal. And for those of you who want to see the rebuttal, well, it's going to take your whole screen, but here she is. Looks like I hurt the feelings of the self-appointed locker room leader of a wrestling school. Let me repeat that. Looks like I hurt the feelings of the self-appointed locker room leader of a wrestling school. Let me know what time hashtag leg slap class starts so I can take my game to the next level. Dude, shut up. Are you kidding? That's fun. <laughs> uh, the whole leg slap comment, can I soapbox for a minute? There's a way to do the effect, the sound, without slapping your thigh, okay? So uh, if you watch close, a lot of times the guy's actually that's taking the punch is actually slapping his opponent on the side. It's a very quick thing. And sometimes if they get close enough, he can slap his own chest. I mean, it's... I've seen it, and look, the guys who are really good at it do it seamlessly. The guys who are not so good at it, eh, you can totally tell. Here's how I, the, the, the whole leg slap thing, the, the sound effect is cool, and it's very impactful. However, I kind of liken it to the stomping the mat when you punch somebody. It doesn't really sound like you're putting your foot through the floor when you punch somebody in the face, despite what pro wrestling have you believe. That's not what a punch sounds like, all right? So uh, I kind of liken that to be the same thing. We all know what they're doing, but you just kind of let it go. It's part of the game. So does, does it bother you? Does it make you crazy? Wally, with a good point, says part of good storylines be using social media. More people pay attention to social media compared to actually watching the shows. Uh, yeah, so um, folks, here is what they're saying. Here's what they're saying right now. They meaning people who claim to know. Um, as you folks know, if you've ever watched the show before, I don't I don't sit here and claim to if if I don't know something, I flat out tell you. I don't report false information. I'm not going to write or report anything that I don't know. I just make it up for headline. That's not going to happen. That's a good way to never write again in this business, okay? Because you won't have a gig for too long. No one's going to hire you, right? So, and I'm definitely not going to broadcast anything or put my name behind something that I don't know to be true. But here's the scuttlebutt online right now is that Vince wasn't happy about this exchange because it wasn't his idea, that this was not a planned thing, that there's no storyline in the works to have these two guys face off on NXT or Monday Night Raw or SmackDown or wherever else. Now, take that with a grain of salt. That is just what I'm hearing. It's the same thing you can hear if you just go listen to the I don't want to say right people, but to certain people, you know what I mean? So that's what's going on out there right now. So there you go. Toby says Champa, uh, Champa is extremely proud of NXT and will defend it with his soul. I agree with that. And by the way, it is Tommaso Champa. Champa. Okay. Everyone pronounces it wrong, but I remember a long time ago, years ago, he had put on his social media somewhere like a the correct pronunciation of his name. So it's Champa. So just so everyone out there knows. Uh, Wally says Vince is the problem nowadays. Man, people have been using that for a long time. I mean, I guess there's some truth to it. He calls the shots. He has the last word on everything until that changes. You know, if there's something you don't like, it's probably not going to change anytime soon for sure. Justin says, does WWE only allow these wrestlers only to use Twitter to promote a match and if only the writers let them? No. Uh, and, and, and in fact... Try telling Randy Orton what he can and can't do. Um, uh, to my knowledge, uh, uh, the, they are in full control of their Twitter accounts. Okay, uh, I'm sure there might be some that here and there that aren't, but uh, Punk will tell you for sure when he was working for WWE that he was in total control. In fact, not only was he control in control of his Twitter account, but he blocked WWE on Twitter. Okay, because they they contacted him, told him to take a tweet down because he had a curse word in it. And he's like, what? So he blocked them on Twitter so they couldn't uh, contact him again like via direct message. Isn't that funny? That's awesome. So yeah, uh, uh, supposedly Vince wasn't happy. Like I said, take that with a grain of salt. It's whatever you think. You can choose to believe that. You can choose not to believe that. So uh, let's see. I just saw a good one. Oh, here we go. Brandon says, I remember when he was in the Indies, he was a standout guy and still is. I agree. Totally. Uh, yep. Shane has touched on something that just happened. This is really, really new or very fresh. 
Vince has released Polyam of his writing duties and replaced him with Bruce Pritchard. If that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, maybe there's good reason for it. Here's what I'll say about Pritchard. I don't think he was the answer before. I don't know if he's the answer now. Was the answer the way they were doing it? No. It's it's like they are grasping at straws to figure out how to write this thing. And uh, I don't know. Sometimes you're on autopilot and you can't really tell the difference. But, dude, listen, good TV is good TV. And I've not been seeing a lot of good TV out of that company for a long time. So... Jim, what's up, Jim? Jim says, well, Orton would know everything about what's best. He is going to be in the greatest match ever. So there, note this is sarcasm. What's up, Jim? So Jim bringing the heat this morning with a nice fastball. Uh, greatest wrestling match ever. If I see that logo again, I'm liable to punch someone hard in the throat, okay? Um, it's WWE. I said last week, you can not You can only take what they do and say with a grain of salt, baby, because it's WWE, and it's just it's just whatever and whatever you think or whatever you like. If you're a staunch WWE supporter, you're going to buy whatever they sell uh, two or three times over, and you're going to be perfectly fine with whatever they say. And if you honestly believe that Edge and Orr are going to have the greatest wrestling match of all time, I know of, of Terry Funk. I know of Ric Flair. I know of Ricky Steamboat. I know of Kazuchika Okada. I know of Hiroshi Tanahashi. Uh, several other guys uh, that that would that could lay claim to that that could lay claim to that title. So, whatever, man. Um, it's the company. It's whatever. Uh, part of me says that they're setting Edge and Orton up for failure because no matter what they do, it won't be great. Suppose the match has already been recorded. They've already had it. They've already got it edited. They're going to work their magic on it. I don't know, dude. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Ricky, you got a shout out, bro. Man, Ricky is like all about the shout outs. Listen, if you want shout outs, like legit shout outs and like, yeah, take your uh, 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 in-depth questions and stuff. I do have a Patreon account, baby. Go to patreon.com, look up Tom Clark's main event, do watch alongs, all that good stuff, man. It's fun. Justin with a big, intense question. What do they need to do in your mind to make good TV again? Because I agree, very predictable for a while. I've been watching since 96. It's been up, down, up, down, but lately they need to spice it up. Here is my simple answer to a very complicated question, Justin, because there's a lot more to it than this. But at the end of the day, you hired these men and women for a reason, okay? You brought them on board for some reason. You either liked the way they looked in the ring. You liked the way they sound on the mic, combination of both. Mostly you like what they can do for you in the future, something, or today or in the future or whatever, okay? so. That's fine. That's all well and good. Let them do it. Did anyone miss that? I'll repeat it. Let the talents do what you hired them to do. You had faith in them when you hired them. When you get them in there, you put a muzzle on them. You tell them, here's some lines. Read the lines. This is how we do it here. You have to read the lines. Does anyone have the lines? Get the paper. What? Just let them go. You know who's writing AEW's television? D Listen, for all you AEW haters out there, relax. I'm about to talk about it, all right? For all you AEW haters out there, to buckle up. You know who's writing AEW's TV? In terms of here's what you're going to have to say? No one. You get it? No one. The promos you hear, for good or bad, they're not getting handed a script, guys. It's not happening that way, dude. It doesn't happen that way in that company. Am I saying that one way is better than the other? I mean, you could take it or leave it, man. That's your opinion. That's your viewpoint on it. In my personal opinion, you let the talents go do what they're good at doing. If you have a talent that's not very good on the mic, let him work on it. How can you get better if you're not allowed to work on it? Well, this guy needs a mouthpiece. He can't talk. They never let him talk. You see what I'm saying? AW is more willing to take chances to let a guy or gal get better. It's about getting better, not staying the same. It's about getting better. You only get better, folks, by working talents better than you are. You only get better on the stick by cutting promos. Well, when's the last time you cut a promo? Six years ago. Well, guess what? You're probably not going to be very good at it. See, speak from the heart. Allow these men and women to speak from the heart. You know what I'm saying? When's the, when's the, dude, I've cut promos myself in the past. You know what? It works for me when I'm amped up, when I got something to say, when I got a real life situation that can fuel that. Let them speak from the heart. They muzzle everyone in that company, dude. They control everything they say. 
What do we see from the backstage interviewers? It's not a real mic. Go. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? The dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. What are your thoughts? Shut up. Obviously, you lost the match. Were you upset that you lost? Who's writing this garbage? Drew McIntyre, the WWE champion, but you understand that the sky is blue. At what point did you know it's blue, and why is it that way? What the hell are they? Sorry, I cursed. My bad. Sorry, Heidi. Uh, I just kind of lost it there. Cutting a promo, baby. Emotional. That's what I'm talking about. It, it makes me crazy. Just let them do their thing. Now, I get it. You've got, listen, all right, uh, here's your talking points. you got about two minutes. Go. And guess what? The best, the best will rise to the occasion, man. They'll rise to the occasion. They don't need lines. That's my really, really long answer to the very intense question. Jim says there's no intensity in anything that be talent, talent does. The ones that do are the old school guys that know how to what to do and don't have to listen to Vince or the producers. And to your point, Jim, why are the new school guys, why can't they get it? Because they're not being allowed to get it. You think the old school guys from the first day they stepped in could do this? If you're a natural talent like Kurt Angle or Roddy Piper on the stick or Flair, maybe. But, dude, I would say the majority of them couldn't. They evolved to that point. The new guys cannot evolve if they're not allowed. Dude, let me ask you. Let me let's put it to you this way. Take a talent that NXT has cultivated from the ground up in 2020 versus a talent AEW that is cultivated from the ground up in 2020. Show them to me in five years' time and tell me who's farther ahead. Now, anything could happen. Uh, either talent could go either direction. So maybe the point is moot in the begin to begin with, and I could be dead wrong no matter what you say. Maybe the whole thing's not even worth mentioning. But in my opinion, the talent that's allowed to express himself, to experience this, to be full, not in control, but have a say, he or she is going to be much farther along than that talent that is hindered from the beginning and told, you can't say that. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me, man. That's me talking. So, uh, let's see. Let's get some comments going on this, man. Anybody else out there? Sorry about the cursing. I curse in real life. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, but I try to keep it clean here. It's not my channel, baby. It's not my channel. Samuel Phelps Combs. I love your show. I try to watch it. Dude, thank you for that, man. I really appreciate that. Are we friends on the Facebook, Sam? Because if not, man, we totally should be. Uh, Shane says, Impact Wrestling and Tessa Blanchard are at a stalemate. Tessa is in Mexico, and Impact wants her to make promos, and she has not sent them any. Let me just tell you something right now, Shane, to your point. You know what the easiest thing in the world is to do to cut a promo? Say it again. You know what the easiest thing in the world is to do is cut a promo? Say it again. You know what the easiest thing in the world to do is to cut a promo? You know how easy it is? See that? It's my kid. It's a phone, okay? There's a camera on the phone. You hit record, you talk. It's that easy. There is no science to this, okay? There's no science to this at all. It's the easiest it's ever been for a pro wrestler to cut a promo. Is right now, baby. You could stop. You could be in your car, on the bus, in the woods, on the toilet. I know that sounds gross. Stay with me. You could be anywhere in the world, anywhere on the planet Earth, dude. Hit record, cut a promo. Why is it so hard? You see what I'm saying? But, dude, all the time, you're like, well, where's that promo? Where's that promo? Dude, because they're not – a lot of talents overthink it, and I totally get it. I totally get that. They want it to be good. They don't want it to be a stereotypical – and I to, and I have a lot of respect for that ideology. But sometimes you just got to get your stuff out there. It's 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 a COVID, a COVID situation, man. If you want it to be dressed up a little bit, put a black tarp behind you, Go into a room that's half lit, put some ambiance, put some kind of uh, environment around yourself, some kind of atmosphere, then hit record. If you're so hell, hell bent, that's not bad, is it? If you're so bent on doing that, then go do that, right? God, I see all the time. I just can't do it. Nate Dog in the house. Macho Man literally cut a promo with pasteurized creamer. <laughs> Dig it. Let me tell you something about Savage Baby, to your point, Nate. Savage could cut a promo on a carton of milk, and you'd want to see that match in two minutes. Like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see Savage, you know, drop the elbow on that carton of milk. To your point, he's fantastic. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tom, you got to be born with that. Okay, 
Could Randy Savage talk out of the womb? Maybe he could. I don't know. I don't really know the answer to that, honestly. Some guys have what they call the gift of gab, okay? Some guys try and never develop it. Dean Malenko is one of them. You know, try as he might, couldn't cut a promo to save his life. He'll tell you that, too. But, again, I ask you, how many guys and gals in WWE, when they come out and they talk, they sound just like this? Case in point, Baron Corbin. Let me tell you something, AJ Styles. I'm the king of WW. Stop. Stop. You mean to tell me when you get excited, when Baron Corbin gets mad, I'm talking about mad, that he goes, listen here, I don't like that at all. I'm very upset. Dude, shut up, robot. Robot, hello. Let him talk. Roman, my God in heaven. Remember how we used to crap on Roman all the time? He sounds stupid. Dude, take the governor off the guy. Let him talk. God, I'm raging. I'm sorry. <laughs> Samuel, send me a request, man. Uh, and if you don't, uh, uh, if you can't find me, send it. Message me on Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger, and I will send you one of the shows over. Promise. James, great point, bro. Warrior Cup promos that made no sense, but we were sucked in. There we go. There we go. Awesome. You know why it didn't matter? Look back on Warrior's promos. They were garbage. They weren't just garbage. What were they, Nathan? What were they, Nathan? I don't have the button yet. Hot garbage. That's it. Uh, it didn't matter. You know why it didn't matter? Because he believed it. He believed it. You get it? It doesn't matter. When Jesse Ventura did heel commentary, you know why he was so good? Because he could talk, man. No. Yeah. He believed what he said. Or at least he made you believe what he said, okay? That's why it works. Why did Bray Wyatt at his best, at his best, have you eating out of the palm of his hand? Because he believed it too. The talent has to buy in. That's how it works. It's hard to buy into anything when you have a stranglehold on you, when you when you are prohibited from saying things, when you're handing a script. How are you going to buy into anything? How? I'd love to know. I want to do an honest-to-God interview with a WWE performer and say, how do you buy in when you're handed a script? Why should you care? Why would you even care about what you're doing? And why is a fan what I care? I'm asking. Dennis says, I love your show. It airs at 1 p.m. on the East Coast, and that's my quiet hour to listen to your show. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Mark says, Sometimes you don't know what my man wants. That's a fair point. Fair point. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob B, Jake, Austin, Alston. That'd be his. Uh, uh, wasting Baron Corbin's talent with the King gimmick. We don't know what kind of talent he can have because they, they won't let him do anything. I mean, if Corbin were in AEW, would he be just a subpar performer? There's It's entirely a good point. It's entirely a good chance that he would be a subpar performer. Maybe his promos wouldn't be any better. I don't know. But I'm just saying to you, in my opinion, because I was asked, okay, uh, in my opinion, uh, we'll never know unless a guy is given opportunity to shine. Give him an opportunity to shine. That's all. Brennan says, Jake, the snake grass promo ever. A lot of people agree with that for sure. Jim says, for as much people don't like him, but Hogan got over with just promos alone. I agree with that. I agree with that. My God, I agree with that. Hogan was a fantastic promo. Go back and watch the old Hogan promos when he was really in his element. Nothing's better. I'll never not give the guy respect for that. Did I get tired of it? Yeah. But I was a kid that was growing up. See? And even as a kid, I'm like, this is exciting. Then when I got older, I'm like, wow, that's terrible. But it doesn't matter. What he did worked. And man, he could fire up a crowd. I'll never not respect him for that. Fantastic promo, for sure. James says, look how many veterans have come back and cut promos recently. Miss the old days. I agree. I totally agree with that. Uh, no, Shane, I didn't say the thing about AJ and Punk. I have to go look that up. Oh, man, did we get off topic or what? You guys want to get back on topic? Let's get back on topic. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to an AEW topic now, if we can. Um, a, uh, excuse me, FTR has debuted on AEW Dynamite. There they are, folks. Uh, we've got, uh, Dax Harwood right here and Cash Wheeler. There they are. 
That is FTR, the tag team formerly known as the Revival. Did you see their match on AEW Dynamite? What did you think? Um, did it live up to your expectations? Was it what you thought it would be? Were you disappointed? Do you wish they'd just come in straight, went for the Young Bucks by the throat, and they start wrestling? Uh, in my opinion, they're saving that match. They're saving that uh, for when live crowds can come back. Cole says hot garbage. That's your uh, opinion on the show, on the on the uh, on their match. Is that what it is? Uh, maybe, yeah. God, I, I'm trying to get off your comment. There it is. All right. Uh, Jamel says FTR. Yeah, I, I say uh, Cole said. Oh, interesting point here. Cole says AW tried too hard. I just can't watch it anymore. Listen, I'm I'm going to tell you I disagree with you, but that's your opinion. And this is mine. I'll respect you. Uh, it's all good with me, man. I get where you're coming from. Uh, they are still a company who is growing. Um, unlike WWE with how many years, 60 years or whatever, 50, 60 years now in, uh, as a, as a company, um, you know, they don't have all this huge backstory and history and old habits and bad habits, and they don't have any of that stuff. They're still finding who they are, I believe. So five, 10 years from now, with hopefully they're still in existence and hopefully thriving. I, I wish nothing but success to that company. Same with New Japan, Ring of Honor, NWA. Uh, that's for sure. So, uh, and, and hopefully they will all survive and make a, a serious go of this. Um, but talk to me in five or 10 years and tell me how you feel then, because I'd be curious to know. You know what I mean? Brennan says, save the Bucks and FTR for a big live match. I agree with you. I think that's exactly what they're doing. Shane going with a rumor that is going around big time. They're going to make a stable with uh, FTR and Sean Spears. Yeah, and if you're going to go the four horsemen route, there's been there's been uh, rumors of Cody being the fourth guy, being the Ric Flair leader. Can I be honest with you? I don't think AEW needs another stable, and I think FTR is fine the way they are by themselves. That's just that's just me talking. Sal says looking for a collaboration between AEW and New Japan. So Sal, what the latest on that is that there's just not been any interest from New Japan. AEW took a lot of their talent, dude. You know what I mean? Uh, Kenny, uh, Kenny Omega, the Bucks, Hangman Page, dude, yikes. Uh, so I don't know if there's hurt feelings or if it's all business or if it's just a feeling of disrespect. I don't know. Ring of Honor had that for a long time too against these guys, but whether or not that's faded, who knows? I'd love to see it happen because I'm a huge New Japan fan. New Japan, by the way, has announced the return of live events. Uh, not a capacity crowd. Obviously, they're going to practice social distancing. Everyone in that crowd will have a mask on. They won't be complaining about it either. Hello, United States. So uh, good for them. Good on them. And I can't wait to see it. Hope they're all safe. And I'm so anxious for some new, for some new New Japan Pro Wrestling, baby. Ricky says Cody going to heel. I hope not. I don't think he needs to. That's just my opinion. Chances love FTR. I think they had a little ring rust, but the match was good. I agree with that. And they said as much too after the match was over. They felt like they had a little bit of rust, but they still had fun and they felt like they made a statement and got their thing out there and did the best they could with it. I enjoyed it. I think Butch, man, dude, come on, be honest with you. Butch and the Blade are growing on me. Every time I see Butcher, I like him even more. I didn't care about this guy to begin with. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know what they were about. Dude, the more I see Butcher, dude, I'm very impressed with this guy. I'm not kidding you, man. I think he's uh um I think he's good talent and uh uh I like his look. I like what he does in the ring. It's good stuff. Dave says any word on Gallows and Anderson? Nothing, nothing on my end, Dave. Uh Impact was advertising all kinds of people for Slam Anniversary, so we'll see. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Robbie says AEW has found a way to do good in wrestling in the short time they've been around the WWE with decades of experience. Kudos to AEW. See, uh, another opinion, and I'll respect that opinion for sure. Jim says, not going to lie, I could get into that stable, and I'm sure you're talking about the stable with Cody Rhodes, Sean Spears, and FTR. I'm not saying I can't get into it. Jim, with another great opinion, Butcher kind of looks like uh, an old-school heel from the NWA days. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, good stuff. I'm an old-school NWA guy. If anybody knows me, they know that for me uh, about me for a fact, dude. No doubt about it. Uh, Ricky says, Cody is going to be leader. What would that mean? Uh, FTR and Spears turn. For no, 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 no chance. it all be, I'm sure it would be a heel stable. Cody would turn heel as a result. I don't know how I feel about that. 
Cody's went on record before saying that the whole heel and baby face dynamic is an outdated concept. I totally disagree. If you lose the heel baby face dynamic in pro wrestling, dude, I, you've lost pro wrestling. And that's when you'll lose old school fans like me. And be honest with you, if every company adopted that belief system and stopped trying to create drama through, you know, the fans are pulling for me, let's clap along, or the fans, hey, hey, forget these fans. If you got rid of that, if every company elimin or eliminated that and adopted that mentality, I do not know how much longer I'd stick around and watch the new product. I don't think I could. Because that the essence of pro wrestling is good versus evil, right versus wrong. That's the essence of pro wrestling. It's an old, it's an old, it's an old trope that's been around for for civilizations, man. The, the concept of good versus evil, no matter what your concept is of the Bible or God or Satan, whatever, all the way up to comic books and movies and TV shows, dude. It's all about right versus wrong, good versus evil. You know what I mean? The righteous versus the sinful. That's what pro wrestling is. It's about doing the right thing versus doing whatever it takes. And um, if you lose that, you lose the essence of professional wrestling. So Dave says, will we see Brock versus Lashley in the future? I believe so. I think there's some serious money to be made in that, but I don't think you're making money with it right now with no crowds. Sam, still looking for me on Facebook. Bro, send me a message on Wrestling Rumors Instant Messenger, man. Just tell me, hey, here I am. I will click on your name when we get done here. I'll send you a request, I promise you. Oh, so Ray's going to do my job for me. How great is Adam Cole? He better not drop the belt to that scrub cross. So uh, Ray bringing some heat. Ray telling me what he thinks, and it's bringing us to the next topic on the agenda today. Uh, let's see. It wasn't the next topic. We're going to go there. How about this? Better chance of retaining Adam Cole or John Moxley. I got a pick. There's the pick. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> on your left, Adam Cole, baby. And on your right, that's right, one John Moxley. John Moxley, AAW champion. Uh, uh, Adam Cole uh, is, of course, the NXT champion. And Adam Cole has got a date with Karrion Cross, formerly Killer Cross, John Moxley uh, facing off against Brian Cage. Which champion, in your opinion, has a better chance of retaining? Do you think Cross is the next NXT champion? Or do you think Adam Cole will weather the storm as he's done with so many challengers in the past? Do you think that Moxley's already going to lose his title? against Cage, or will they put the belt on Brian this early in the game? What's your thoughts on that? Jim says most likely to retain is Mox. Uh, let's see. Ray says Cole. Uh, let's see. Tim says Cross is the real thing. He's awesome. My new favorite since Triple H. Ray says Cole all day. There you go. So, Jamel, good opinion there. I like it. Both will retain. Does anyone believe both will lose? And don't just say that because you're trying to pose Jamel here, okay? Say it because you mean it. I'm curious. Does anyone believe they'll both lose their titles? Uh, let's see. Dennis says Moxley for sure. Cole, Adam Cole could be cruiserweight champ. Wow, that's a hot take maybe. I get what you're saying, though, because of the weight and everything. So, uh, so Cole versus Cross, heel versus heel. Uh, yeah. Good point. Uh, Cross won't be heel when he works uh, Cole for sure. Cole will be the heel in that match. No doubt about it. Ray says Cole should never lose. Wow. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens, man. We also said the same thing about Taker at Mania. That didn't work out too good, did it? So, yeah, I'm just curious about what you think. In my opinion, I don't think they take the belt off Moxley this soon. Uh, I think that Adam Cole is going to lose the title to Karrion Cross. I think uh, NXT is going to run with the brand new hottest thing on the brand, and I think that's him. And I think he'll walk right in and win that title, and Cole won't get it back. And then Cole will be off to the main roster, or he'll be out of NXT. That's my hot take for the day. I don't know if it's true or not. That's just my opinion. Again, I was asked, so I'm just telling you what I think. Gregory hits us with they could both lose their belts, baby. And by the way, if you've never seen Adam Cole live, you got to do it because, number one, he's awesome in the ring. Uh, that's number one. Number two, uh, uh, it's great. It's fun to say Bebe with him. So it's fun. So uh, Dave asked where they're going with this Ray versus Seth story, brother. Uh, uh, if I knew, I would sure tell you because right now I think it's hot garbage, my opinion. So there you go. Uh, but, 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 but. Wally says AW is waiting for changes with live crowds, and I respect that. I get where they're coming from for sure. Uh, Jim says, too soon for Mox, but Cross has the rocket push. I totally agree with that. 
Uh, Robbie talking about uh, uh, one of my comrades in arms in the business, Chris Featherstone, by the way, interviews. Uh, uh, he hosts Pancakes and Power Slams. Great podcast. Go out of your way to go watch it and go out of your way to follow him. A uh, great guy, too, by the way. Uh, he interviewed Cage. He's a nice guy, but too early for Monster to drop the title. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think Cage just got there. And the great thing about Brian Cage, he doesn't need a title. You know that. He doesn't need a title right now, to be honest with you. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Shane says, Adam Cole and Flip Gordon, HVW. That's my two picks to the question last week. I'll take it, Shane. I'll take both of them. By the way, were you surprised that Flip Gordon just re-signed, by the way, with Ring of Honor? I, I can't say I... I can't say that I saw it coming, but I I, I don't know. Uh, Flip is a different kind of cat, if I can be honest with you. I just listened to his interview on the Ring of Honor Strong uh, podcast, and dude, he's a different kind of cat. I enjoy his work, man. Me and the boy watched him. Uh, we were there that night, Concord, when he hurt his um, hurt his knee, tore his knee up. Dude, that was uh, that was brutal. He was in serious freaking pain, man. And then we got to see him when he came back. His comeback event was the Crockett Cup. So that was good to see too. So we got to see the the double whammy there. But uh, I enjoy Flip's work. I love him as part of Villain Enterprises. That's something he should never stop doing. He fits in like a glove, dude, perfectly. Uh, uh, big time spoke in the wheel of that group, no doubt. Um, but yeah, he re signed Ring of Honor. Crazy. So, uh, Mark says, I want to know what they're doing with Root. He's from my hometown, Peterborough, uh, Ontario, Canada. Rude, Rude, uh, Rude has exactly what it takes to be a star in any promotion he chose to go to. He chooses to stay with WWE. He chose to sign the contract. He chose probably to sign a new contract. It's his call. Um, he evidently doesn't believe they're not doing anything with him or why in the world would you sign again? We don't know his circumstance. I'd love to see Rude in AEW. I think he'd be a fantastic fit for him. I'd love to see Rude in the NWA, if I'm being honest. Him and James Storm come to blows at some point or even reform as a tag team. I don't know. But uh, I love him as well. I really do. Justin says, I read that Adam Cole has 18 months left on his contract. Uh, stay or leave in your opinion. 18 months left on his contract. Well, unless he asked out, and we all know what happens to be if you ask out of your contract, you not only got to stay, but they do all they can to bury you, okay? And they they make you look like a fool, make you do dumb stuff on TV, ask FTR formerly known as a revival. They'll testify that fact, Jack. Who is going to win between Edge or Orton? Jenny says. Jenny, what's up? Um, I don't know. I'll say Orton takes this one by hook or by crook. So there you go. Uh, folks, we're coming up on the hour mark. Man, this hour just flown by. We got a few more things to talk about here. Um, how about this? Do you guys have a best match from NXT in your house? Uh, you guys watch pay per view Sunday? If so, what did you think? What did you think was the best match? Um, tell me what you think about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought Finn Balor and Punishment Martinez, well, Damian Priest, I still call him Punishment Martinez. By the way, I interviewed uh, Punishment Martinez back in the day. It's, it's on the show. Again, go to Tom Cart's main event uh, uh, and, and subscribe to the show. And it's in the archives. Go check out the episode. Pretty cool show. Very cool guys when he was still with Ring of Honor, uh, he was a former world television champion. I think he was still television champion when I talked to him. Good guy, man. At the time, had no idea he was going to become Damian Priest in NXT. So uh, to me, that he and Finn Balor were by far the best match. But that's uh, that's just me talking. Good, solid pro wrestling match, and I think it did more for for Priest than anything else. Anything else he's done so far. So there you go. Uh, what else from in your house? You guys uh, saw that you were impressed with. What was your favorite match from the card that night? I'm interested to see what you think. What you think about the ladies' match? Io Shirai becoming the uh, NXT Women's Champion. Hmm. Uh, I love you. I, I have sang Io's praises for months. Okay. Uh, she's fantastic. She's so good in the ring. Uh, she's got a great character. She's very proficient. She uh, so good at what she does, man. I don't know how anyone could ever hate on Io Shirai for anything she ever does. Be ashamed to do so. Be stupid to do so. She's so good. Tim says Cross and Champa thought it was fun. Was surprised it was dominated, but set up Cross for dominating character. I agree with that for sure. No doubt about it. Uh, see, Keith says NXT was great from top to bottom. Uh, EO winning was great. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the, uh, I enjoyed that match. I did. I, I, I don't know if I'm crazy about the ending, but I enjoyed how it ended. Put it that in terms of who got the belt. I still wish Rhea Ripley, they do right by her. They lit her on fire. 
she's hotter than the 4th of July, man. Then all of a sudden she's cold as December. So there you go. Gregory says Baylor, Baylor and Priest, hands down, stole the show. I agree with that. Dude, I do agree with you. I think it was an excellent match. Samuel says Rhea to Raw. Well, let me put it to you this way, Samuel. If they couldn't handle her NXT, they're not going to be able to handle her Raw either. Hey, Bruce Pritchard, don't screw her up. Uh, we'll see what happens, man. Shannon, what's up? Says Io Shirai being champion was long overdue. I agree with that. I think she's more than earned it. God, she's so good. Again, I've sung her praises for so long. And I've told you guys this before, but it bears repeating a thousand times. If I've said it once, I've said a thousand more, man. And one of the best things about EO, to me, the best part of her game is the fact that that what she does in the meantime, in the between times, in between the holds, the punches, and the moves, and the acrobatics, in between the way she physically walks, dude, she totally gets how this thing is supposed to be done. She gets it. She embraces it. She lives it. She breathes it. She eats it. Dude, she's fantastic. And it's just, it's a joy. It's a pleasure to watch her work, man. I love watching her in the ring. Jamel says, I'm just mad they're going to put another title on Flair. Jamel, from your lips to the ears of God, my friend, because, yes, it does look like uh, that Charlotte Flair is going to be Asuka. And, by the way, it's Asuka, not Asuka. Okay? Anyone out there who's pronouncing Asuka? Stop! I know it's how it's spelled. I get it. School is, is spelled shul. We don't call it shul. Okay? Stop. It's Asuka. All right? Live with it. Jeez. Paul says, do you think Bray will turn up on Sunday? Paul, I say, why not? Why not? That leads to the next uh, thing we're going to talk about today. WWE Backlash on Sunday. You guys have anything? And by the way, definitely, it's Sunday, man. Um, is there anything you guys want to talk about that's going to be happening on Backlash? Anything you're looking forward to? What do you think is going to go down? Who do you think is going to win the big matches? Do you have any predictions for me that you'd like to do? Usually, we'll do like a prediction show leading into an event. I just didn't feel like doing that this time, man. So, I feel like you can get all your prediction shows from everywhere on the planet right now online. So I just didn't want to fall in the same category again. I want to do my own thing. So there you go. By the way, I got a big empty shelf right there. It's just dying for some new pop vinyl. So if you, you know, Patreon where it's at, baby, you got to help fund my pop vinyl addiction. So I got to get some more. Yeah. Uh, Victor says, was Eo's uh, in-ring jacket a tribute to evil? Ooh, Victor, I got to go back and watch that. I got to go back and watch that. I love evil, by the way. Everything, Dave. Victor, Victor, everything is evil. There you go. Shan says, I think she'll be the greatest NXT Women's Champion since Oscar. Uh, could be. Could be. Never know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. It all depends on how uh, WWE chooses to let her do. If they just, how they handle her, how they book her. Booking is key, baby. How are they going to book her moving forward? Is she going to be made to look like a chump or a dominant champion? You know what I'm saying? I'd love to know. Um, I'm anxious to see because I don't want them to screw her up because I don't think she deserves it at all. So uh, can you see uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey keep tag tile? Yes, I can. Uh, because I don't know if they're going to, uh, um, you know, come to blows anytime soon. Jim says, prediction, Edge versus Orton will not be the greatest wrestling match ever. But, folks, if it doesn't happen, Jim's the one that told you. So, everybody remember that. Jim, I am incl inclined to agree with you. Shane brings up something we talked about last week. The Jeff Hardy storyline goes way too far tonight, uh, but I don't want to spoil it, but it crosses the line tonight. Yeah, don't spoil it, Shane. Yeah, the whole thing is ridiculous. I voiced my opinion on that last week, and I got some agreements, and I got some nonsense, but it's, it's whatever. Frank, Frank says, I just want to say real quick, as a Sting fan, since the beginning, and UT fan, we never got the WrestleMania moment they could have, not even won a match, just a moment, face-to-face, -face, anything. Frank, I'll agree with that, just a face-to-face. -face. And here's an idea for you. They're doing all these cinematic matches now with no live audience. Why not do Sting versus Taker? What are you waiting on? Why does this thing want to do it? You can protect him. He can be safe. He doesn't have to get hurt at all. Dude, I mean, it, it could be a walk in the park. You could take a break if you had to. I'm not trying to be funny when I say that, but dude, if, if you're if you're blown up, take five. It's recorded. It's taped. It's edited, dude. They don't have to go full thrall and nonstop recording or whatever. It's not going to be live. Why not just make it happen? I know you'd want to have to happen in front of fans, but dude, the face-to-face -face stuff alone, to your point, would be monumental. Imagine that. But I'll be honest with you. I think, in my opinion, the ship has sailed. Never say never in pro wrestling, in my opinion. Never say never, obviously. But uh, no, nah, dude, I'm just not. I just don't see it happening. Now. I think the time is, is way, way uh, 
pass this by, unfortunately. Davis says uh, it's about time to put the belt back on Ripley. I agree with that. Never should have took it off ever. Charlotte didn't need it. Are we any better today than we were before that Charlotte got the NXT women's title? Is anything any better on that show? Was Charlotte any better? Is Rhea any better? Did anything good come of it? The answer to all those questions is no. Okay. So why do it? I'll tell you why. Vince McMahon wanted to do it. That's it's simple. And and listen, Triple H is running the show. I get it. You're gonna have to trust and see where it's gonna go. He keeps saying that. There's a bigger story here. Uh, try to give him the benefit of the doubt because NXT most time doesn't let you down like the main roster does. We'll see what happens, man. Uh, Robert says, women continue. All right, this is in response to something Sam said about bringing back bikini matches. Brother, I'm not with that, man. I'm with I'm with uh, Robbie. I don't need that anymore. I didn't need it when it was happening. I've told the story before about being a, uh, uh, being a fan during the Attitude Era, and as soon as the women started having lingerie matches and mud butt matches and bikini matches, I turned the channel back to Nitro. I didn't care about it. I just wanted the wrestling. That's what I want now. You know what I mean? That's why I don't like – I only care for the fluff now. I mean, dude, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm old school as old school can be, and I will take the new school stuff and stride and take it on the chin. You know, having said that, Orange Cassidy is fun, fun to watch. He's entertaining, but I'll be honest with you, too much Orange Cassidy at any, at any given time against the wrong performer is too much and it's got to be stopped. You know what I mean? It's just got to be. You can't have Orange Cassidy face down Jake Hager and Jake Hager play that game. Uh, and they showed that, and they did the right thing by Hager taking his head off. It's the right thing to do. You can't do that. You know what I mean? You can do that against certain people. I can't believe they let them do it against Pac. That was, that was surprising to me. But, again, I'm old school. That's just my mentality uh, uh, as far as exposing the business is concerned. I don't think you should go out of your way to expose your own business. I think it's a mistake. That's just me talking. So, Shane hits us with Sting will fight Undertaker when CM Punk wrestles again. Not going to happen. So, yeah, I agree with you, man. I think maybe the ship has sailed. Son, come say hey. I hear my boy downstairs. He actually, uh, before we sign off today, we're going to let the boys say hello. So we'll get him involved in the live show. He hasn't been on the show in a while. And now, special guest, straight from my living room, it's the boy. Jeff, fun last night? Huh? Uh-huh. Oh, show off the shirt, Jack. Come here. That's the shirt, yeah, right there. Huh? Yep. Feeling Enterprises, baby. So, all right. Folks, we are up on the hour mark. The dog's leaving the room. The boy made a guest appearance. It's all good. Listen, man, I'm going to take one more, and we're going to get out of here. Uh, let's see. Somebody hit me with a good one. Leave me with uh, something motivational, inspirational, something we can uh, end the day on. Take us out on a high note, man. Give me something good. Make it powerful. Give me something good. Come on. You can do it. Hit me. Because I see one. If I don't if I don't get something inspirational, I'm going to go with the one I see. Anybody got something for me before we get out of here? I know I don't have that much lag on this show. Come on, folks. Give me something good to end the chat with, to end the show with, and we will take it home. And you'll get a shout out in the whole nine. Hit me, folks. Come on now. Tim, we're going to end with you, my man. Tim says, great show. Tim Amick. Graham show, great show, always makes my Friday. Tim, my friend, let me tell you something. You're a gentleman and a scholar. I appreciate the kind words. I appreciate the fandom. Listen, guys, that's about it for us. We're going to get on up out of here. Uh, we got stuff to do today. Uh, and even if we didn't, we got lives to lead and get back to uh, life. So um, news about next week. Tom Clark's main event will not be here next week. We're going to take a week off. We'll be back the following Friday. OK, I'll announce again on my page soon. I'll try to update you as much as I can. We're not going to be here next Friday. We'll be here the Friday after. So everybody that tunes in next Friday at 12, you're probably going to be disappointed. OK, so if any of you watch the show for the first time today, thanks for coming on board. To all of you out there who watch today and have been watching for a long time, I say thank you. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, as always, to Heidi Ryan, the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for getting us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everybody out there for your support. Please remember Tom Carr's main event on Patreon. Follow Tom Carr's main event on Facebook. And remember, the show is always free, baby. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. Nothing, no charge for any of the content you get from me, only the exclusive stuff that's available only on the Patreon site. So go please check that out. Let's hang out sometime, man. It'll be fun. Trust me. I'm a good guy. Believe me. I'm getting out of here, man. I think that's all I got for you. Listen, thanks again to everybody for tuning in. Thanks, everybody, for watching. 
Uh, much love. Take care of each other. Take care of each other out there this weekend. Uh, be safe. Stay healthy. Stay home where you can. If you go out in public, wear a mask for God's sake. Be smart. Use your use your common sense for goodness' sake. And uh, let's be nice to each other, man. Get back out there, man. I'm getting out of here. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. Enjoy Backlash if you can. And we're out of here, man. We'll see you next time on Tom Clark's Main Event.